can't take that chance. We can't set him outside. It's a little cold. Um, and she's really got to the point where she's, he's aggravating her. So, um, now that's all I'm supposed to say. Steve is not giving away Sonya's dog. That is not what this is about. And I told her, I said, 20 years from now, that's what will happen. You gave my dog away. No, that is. But she came out here a while ago. She said, just say something. So I said something. And you wanted witnesses. And I want witnesses. She said, she said. Um, so he's, he's a good dog. I just, uh, just telling you that that's available. There you go. Talk to Sonny about it, not me. Talk to Sonny. Um, tonight is the last video series, or the last video of the series. However, you're going to see part of it tonight and part of it next week, Lord willing. It's about the, the victorious gospel that will, that will go past all of the things that we're dealing with now. Uh, it will be victorious in that it, it goes further than we ever think it does. It succeeds in places and people that you think are, are unreachable. So um, I want you to listen carefully to tonight and to the scriptures. And there's one particular scripture that David Jeremiah will talk about. And it is uh, the secret to all of this. And it simply says that the secret of this is Jesus living in us. Not up there somewhere. He's at the right hand of the Father, but his, him, his spirit living in us. That's the secret. And that's how we really know if we belong to Him or not. It's His Spirit indwells us. It's directly out of, out of the Scripture. So hang on to that when you hear that tonight. I don't know about you, but sometimes you may think, I don't know if you say it or not, but you may think these people are past help. This culture is past help. These people just, they, they'll never get it. When we think that way or if we feel that way or sometimes in our frustration we kind of start to give up. Remember, nothing's too big for God. He's reached to people and, and spread the love and the grace and the mercy and got people's attention and convicted hearts and people that, that you would never, ever think they would ever even consider following Christ. So that's, that's one of the things you're going to hear tonight and, and emphasize is that uh, we've got to keep on keeping on. And even last week I mentioned to you a little bit about Iran and their um, participation and, and this thing with Israel and, and, and what's going on there in the Middle East. I have uh, passed around a flyer. Have you all seen it? It's, it's going around. Since we're on Facebook, I can't say a whole lot about what that says, but I want you to, to know this. And you don't, you don't hear political stuff from me um, but I want you to understand this because our mailboxes have become inundated with political stuff. You can never assume that they are what they appear to be. This came to me today by a concerned uh, church member. It showed up in their mailbox. And my understanding is everyone in the city limits got this in their mailbox today. It, it made me just instantly angry. Um, I shared it with someone else and, and I shared my concerns with them. They did some research. It was easy to do because the website is at the bottom of that flyer. Okay. The people that are passing these things around not only are not from here, they're from Ohio. They, that's their headquarters. But they are the opposite, the, the opposite party of what you think is on that piece of paper. I've also we received a lot of stuff in the mail here recently about if if you want the election to go this way, then you can't vote for this person. And when you read it, you think, I know which party this is for because they insinuate that. It's from the other party. And I, I want you to be aware, and I say this because you can't believe anybody hardly. And when it comes to politics, especially flyers like you're, hold, you're passing around, the what they're trying to do is to make us mad and to divide us. And I want you to understand that because it happens just that quickly. And today, that short conversation I had with someone, I was so upset about that. And, and they did the research and, and gave me back the information and said, all you have to do is check out the website. They're, they're assuming, they're banking on the fact that most of us aren't going to check. 
So that flyer seems to come from somewhere local. It seems to be backing a local candidate, and it seems to be coming from the very uh, left side of politics. It is not. It's just the opposite. And the other thing I was telling you about that's been flooding our mailboxes seems to be coming from the right. It's not. It's coming from the left. So be aware that this is our only source of truth, period. This is it. This is our only source of truth. So um, just don't fall in the trap of, of getting angry and speaking out out of emotion without doing the research, okay? It makes you not want to vote at all. It does. It does make you not want to vote at all. That's why you have to pray about it and do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. And I can't comment on it just because we're on Facebook as far as what's on there. But it's really the backside and it's the bottom of that flyer uh, that says we won't surrender and this is what we're going to do that's so insightful. And that's that way on purpose. They're doing that on purpose. And you can go to the website and you can see their purpose statement. That's how I know this. You go to their purpose statement and it clearly says who they stand for and what they're trying to do. And it's the opposite of who you think put that out. It's the opposite of who I thought put it out. So both parties are doing this. They're trying to divide and conquer and get you angry with your neighbor. So just be careful getting caught up in all this stuff. I know this is going to accelerate and, and the next year everything's just, and, you, and you're going to find yourself in grocery stores and there's going to be arguments and well, I'm, I'm, you're believers first. If you're a believer, you're a believer first. Your loyalty is to Christ first. Thank the Lord that we're here in the United States. There's a lot worse places we could be. However, our loyalty first is always to Christ. So keep that in mind. As you're speaking to someone, you're not speaking to primarily a Republican or Democrat. You're speaking to either a lost person or a saved person. Period. So see them that way and, and address them that way. Love them that way. But I just wanted to show you that today because this is just a little proof that either party can be very deceptive, very manipulative, and can cause us to just fight and hate people. And the Bible clearly gives us another directive in how to deal with folks, is to love them, teach them the truth, but to love them and reach out to them and not be divided so quickly because we think they're sending out stuff that they're really not. Yes, sir. Pastor, I was just going to add, you've said it already, that whatever political entity they purport to represent and don't, yes. Their first act is deception. Yes. If their first, you can depart right yes. then and there. Yeah. If, if the first thing that out of their mouth of their right. printed word is to deceive. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what Roberta was referring to is that it makes you not want to participate at all. You know what I did when you I got mine in the mail? I put it right in my shredder. I didn't even read it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm not even looking And that's, and, and, and I, I should have. I shared this with somebody the other day and I, and I, I won't stay on this long. I shared this with somebody the other day that when it comes time to vote, you will receive, like we've been doing for years, a voter's guide, which simply gives you their the candidate's record of what they voted on in the past. It is a, something that you can research and find out for yourself. But if there's two candidates that are being considered, it simply gives a list, a very short and abbreviated list, of things they voted on in the past. That's all that we do when it comes time to voting. You won't hear anything from the pulpit about who you should vote for. You'll hear plenty in the scripture along the way, all year long, and, and all the time about what's right and what's wrong. You have to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance in your own heart. But just make sure that things like that, when they come to your mailbox or someone uh, mentions it, that it doesn't cause us to push away from Folks, so I, I learned a lesson today that something I thought was true was not just the opposite. Um, that didn't even cost you any extra. Um, after we finish this video next week, Lord willing, we will begin a study on holiness. Um, this is Stephen Olford's book, The Way of Holiness. And Stephen Olford and Henry Blackaby were uh, good friends, at, but um, I went to, to Ridgecrest to hear. Blackaby and Stephen Olford was there and I actually got to talk with him and uh, he's from Britain um, and he is uh, I don't even know if he's still around these days, um, I don't know but he was a, a very dedicated believer in Christ 
who've had an affinity for preaching and teaching about holiness and the importance of it in our lives. So I wanted to just give you a heads up. That's what's coming next. Okay. And our prayer concern tonight, um, George made it back safely. George Eaton drove all the way up to somewhere and uh, picked up another tractor, another toy. He drove off uh, last night, today, and finally made it home safely. So that's great. He's, he's, he's good. So he was so excited. He left Sunday night uh, late, but he's back. Um, Laurie Russell has asked us to pray for her niece, Kathy Jo Calhoun, um, who was in the hospital. She had a stroke, a mild stroke, and um, a tumor, a brain tumor. I talked to Frank. Uh, the tumor is benign, is what I understand. And when I say mild stroke, that always to me seems like a contradiction of terms. A stroke is a stroke, but I know the difference. I mean, I know, um, you know, there's there's significance, uh, but it's, it's serious. It's my own stroke. It's serious. But anyway, pray for Kathy Jo Calhoun, Laurie's uh, niece. And you put that in perspective, she's younger than you are. That's, yeah, thank you, Ladina. She's, she's young. Um, <laughs> what'd you say? <clears throat> young. Thirties. We don't claim to be young anymore. We are wise and experienced. That's, that's right. Wise and experienced. Okay. We'll go with that. Any other prayer concerns tonight? Praises. Yes, ma'am. This is Lisa. My daughter-in-law's stepfather, Bobby Sparks, had a mild stroke, yes. and he was in intensive care, and they gave him what kind of medication or whatever could they, can they give him to stop it? Or? Okay. Um, and it, it just affected his speech just a little okay. bit, but he was expected to go home and have... That's great. So, yeah. Bobby Sparks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also the Hunter Anderson family. Hunter Anderson family. Cousin of Chaz that passed away suddenly on Monday. Okay. What's Richard Brown? Richard Brown? Lift up Miss Helen Harvick. Uh, she's on our list, but continue to pray for her. Um, Cameron Harrington, who's been here the last two Sundays. Mm -hmm. Dara says, and doctors say his foot's improving. Mm -hmm. Keep praying for Cameron. Mm -hmm. And Pat Meeks. And Pat Meeks. Um, 
Pat and Dave. Uh, she's still healing from her fall and from their accident, their car accident. Um, Dave's doing fine as far as he didn't get banged up in the car accident, uh, from what Ms. Pat says. But we'll continue to pray for them. Also, Dan Beavers, uh, James Carroll asked me to put him on the prayer list. Dan and Candy, his wife, used to be here at Homewood. And he does a lot of maintenance stuff and tree cutting and different things. And he was doing some maintenance work and a big pry bar, some type of pry bar, came and hit him in the head knocked him out and he fell down a flight of steps and had about 25 treads, 25 steps. So um, pray for Dan and Candy. That's, it's miraculous that he didn't break his neck being unconscious falling down a flight of steps. But anyway, pray for Dan. What else? American Heart Association, and this is at Lakewood. Yeah. It's always funny because we used to camp there sometimes, and um, some people would would schedule a camping trip, and we talked to one or two that didn't realize it was American <laughs> Heart Association. But I would think they would tell people, but they would show up, and there's horses all <laughs> throughout. The I love that. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so pray for Calvin as they're there. American Heart Association, they get around the beach and Aww. all kinds of stuff. Don't yeah, I see? usually go down and take pictures of them on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, um, it's a prayer request, but uh, I'm giving plate. No, I'm giving whole blood right because something's too high. I've been giving platelets. What's too high? Red blood cell? Anyway. The ones they take from me, they leave the other ones, and it's too high, so i got to give whole blood. But I, I give platelets and plasma fairly often. Sometimes they take it. I don't just give that. I show up, and they take what they want, but anyway. There's always a shortage, and my understanding is the plasma or the platelets only has a five-day shelf life. So there's always, and it says since COVID, it's been worse and worse. And I get texts, emails, phone calls. Um... There's always a great need. If you can give blood, please do. It's a very simple thing that we can do, and it, and it helps. I didn't know this the other day. I found out that people were giving platelets, but they were getting paid for it. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm missing out. But I, I, well, I found out the difference. At least this is what the, that was told by a lady at the Red Cross, is that a lot of the places that are paying, it goes to pharmaceutical companies for research. And all of the blood you give at Red Cross is going to patients. And I have an app on my phone, and that's what I was told, but I have an app on my phone that tracks, doesn't tell you the individual's name, but it tells you where your blood went, how much of it you've given, the, the needs, different things. A lot of it's for leukemia patients and, and stuff like that. But anyway, it's a prayer request, but it's also... A, thing that, folks, we can literally give people life by just giving something that God replenishes in our own body. So please consider that, okay? Um, and you get free food afterwards. <laughs> what more <could> you want? <laughs> um, all right. So, um, any other prayer requests or praises? She asked for Tiffany Combs. Thank you. I uh, just talked to Sue today about that. Yes, sir, Mr. Jerry? Uh, uh, this is a praise. It's all Jesus. Uh, last week I shared about the two movies that Lisa and I watched and were blessed by it. It was running the bases and playing the flute. Well, I mentioned it to all my core. I wrote it down on paper and handed it, right. handed it to each of them. And I see this gentleman once a week on Fridays. He says, oh, by the way, I saw playing the flute. And I was really blessed by it. I can't wait next week, which is now. Oh, that's great. I, I can't wait to see running the bases. Thank you. I'm like, that's great. All the praise to Jesus. A very simple way to pass on the gospel. Good job, Jerry. That's, that's great. Who mentioned After Death, the movie? Can Karen. Can I give you information? Karen. I did see the trailer of that. 
I don't know anything more about it than that, but it's a new movie that just came out on the 27th, After Death, and the trailer looks good. But if, have y'all seen it yet? If y'all see it, let me know about it so I can tell the congregation, but I don't want to tell them if I don't, I haven't seen it yet or anything, but I did look at the trailer. Just care. Thank you for giving me the heads up. Any other praises or prayer requests? Just to remind you, um, or just to remind you that um, if we don't hear about prayer requests, uh, update after two weeks, everything drops off. So if you pray for someone and their name disappears, it's simply because we haven't heard. If we don't drop names off, obviously we're going to run out of room. So um, if there's an update, we'll keep it on. But if there's not an update, or if they're out of the hospital and doing well, we'll praise the Lord for that and, and move on. But um, just keep that in mind, because uh, some folks wonder why their name's not on there anymore, and that's, that's why. Let me pray with you, and uh, give you a short introduction to this. Yes, ma'am. Your sister said she had a physical therapist, and she got a full range of motion in her shoulder. That's great. So pray for Debbie. She's got a full range of motion in her shoulder where she had rotator cuff surgery. Debbie Clark. Good news. Gonna come up here soon and see the house. So she's got a dog too. You want Oreo? <laughs> <laughs> Don't read what she replies. <laughs> All right, let me pray with you. Father, thank you for your kindness and grace, and I thank you, Lord, for being a personal God. There is no way to follow you and to be a believer in Christ without understanding how personal of a God you are. You live within us. You dwell within us. You can't get any person more personal than that. Father, help us not to see you as a God in the distance and uh, the man upstairs or any kind of uh, things like that, but to understand, to follow you, to trust you, to be called your own child. We must be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Help us to understand tonight the power uh, of the gospel and how it will prevail no matter how bad the world gets and our culture and the belief system and everything around us, Lord, but the gospel will prevail. And I pray that you would help us to walk uh, like victors in this world and to act and to live like those who understand that the Lord will be victorious. Sometimes we seem to be defeatists who have just given up and focus on the negativity that this world propagates and things we see and things that are mailed to us, Lord, we just assume it's right and true and, and it gets us down and it beats us up pretty heavily most of the time. I pray that you keep us in your word, keep us focused on that which is true, the things that you have stated and that you've recorded and inspired in your holy word. I pray that we follow you and trust in you, Lord. Thank you for those that have received answers to prayers and those that you've restored and healed, those that you've propped up in the midst of the deep valleys they're going through. I pray that you'd strengthen them and continue to give them a peace that only comes from you and a, and a contentment, a joy and a contentment, Lord. I also pray that these folks would, would turn to you, trust in you, believe in you, and rely on you. Sometimes uh, it's just we call on you when we need you, when we think we need you, and then when we think we have control and everything's good, we don't get back to you. But Help us to understand we need you every step of the way, every breath we take, um, every moment of the day, moment by moment. Mm -hmm. I thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. This video is, is exciting. It is, uh, gives us uh, a reason to smile and to walk with a little bounce in our step.
because it reminds us of the victory of the gospel. David Jeremiah starts out with uh, some things about Billy Graham and his ministry. He talks a lot about different passages that give us confidence that the gospel will prevail. And I want you to pay close attention to those. I'm going to let you see about 20 minutes of it, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit. Okay? Y'all good? Yep. All right. Make sure you pass that flyer around so everybody gets to see it. So next week we wear our jammies? <laughs> yeah. He's going to talk about that, too. Oh, yeah.